Hi, I'm Steve from 4QD. We know that over half the controllers that are sent back to us for repair either have nothing wrong with them or else a blown fuse track that you can easily repair yourself. To save you time and postage costs, today I'm going to show you some simple checks that you can use to hopefully resolve the simple problems. Today we're going to take a look at the Pro 150. This controller has an optional display programmer module and in normal operation this is what should happen. When you turn the ignition switch on, the Pro 150 will do some self-checks and then display PD, which means it's in power down mode and ready to go. Moving the pot like this will make the motor start to rotate and operating the reverse switch will make the motor go in reverse. If there is a problem, you may get a fault code on the display or a series of warning tones. If this does happen, then have a look at the manual for more details of what the codes mean. Make sure you've printed off the fault finding sheet from our website and then remove the cover from the Pro 150. Next we're going to measure the voltages on the 6 pin connector. These can tell us a lot about what is going on with your system. First make sure that your system is safe to test. Either jack up the wheels or disconnect the main drive motors. We use either a small motor or a light bulb for testing. Next, set your voltmeter to the 200 volt DC scale. All these voltage measurements are going to be made with respect to the B- terminals, and to make this easy, we use a crocodile clip on the black meter wire. Now we're going to measure the voltage on each of the pins of the six-way connector. Start by placing the meter red lead onto pin A, which corresponds to the yellow wire. This should measure the same as the battery voltage. Now move the meter lead to pin B, which corresponds to the white wire. This should be zero with the ignition switch off, and the same as your battery voltage with the ignition on. Write the values in the box on the sheet. Now move the meter lead to pin C, which corresponds to the black wire. With the ignition on in the direction forward, this should be zero, with the direction set to reverse, this should be the same as your battery voltage. Write the values in the grey boxes on the sheet. Now we'll check the pop wires. Move the meter lead to pin D, which corresponds to the red wire. With the ignition off, this should be zero. With the ignition on, this should be around four to five volts. Write the values in the grey boxes on the sheet. Move the meter lead to pin E, which corresponds to the blue wire. With the ignition on, and the pot set to minimum speed, this should be zero. As the pot is turned up, it should gradually increase to around four to five volts. Write the values in the box. Now move the meter lead to pin F, which corresponds to the green wire. This should be zero. Write the value in the grey box on the sheet. Now have a look at the results. The test sheet has some possible causes if any of the voltages are wrong. If you're stuck, then scan and email the completed sheet to us. Whilst we're here, I'll also show you the position of the fuse tracks. They are here and here. You can test them electrically by switching your multimeter to the resistance scale and then measuring across these points. If the fuse track has blown, you can repair them by soldering some 1 amp fuse wire across these holes or by fitting a self-resetting fuse like this. These are available on our website. There is also a third track on the PCB which can blow under some short circuit conditions. Although we didn't design it as a fuse track, it's worth checking if you are getting pot related faults.